Welcome back everyone. In the previous tutorials, we set up the API backend and the front end to make the API call. In this lesson, we'll cover Stripe webhooks to listen to our subscription checkout events. So what a webhook is, is basically think of it as Stripe sending information back to our app and then our app backend is basically listening for these type of information. Information will be like uh, the user has paid the invoice or the user has the user has signed up to a Stripe subscription. And here there's a huge documentation on it uh, within Stripe's documentation page. Uh, you can read all about it. To be honest, I think the few major ones you need to listen to is the customer subscription created, customer subscription updated, and customer subscription deleted. Um, that's what I recommend as a bare minimum. You can read go further by having say invoices paid, uh, etc etc you know you can handle all this by reading this so i'm not going to go through it you can read it at your own time but let's set up the webhook um, to listen to this subscription events so in order to deploy a webhook we need to deploy cloud function so let's add a webhook uh, for using cloud functions so let's quickly call this um, cloud function stripe stripe maybe customer subscription and I've already written a set of code. I'll go through it with you. So here, the code is um, going through and saying we need, we're calling Stripe. Uh, this is a Stripe key. And then we will also need to input the endpoint secret later on, which I'll show you um, how to configure. Um, one key thing here is that when we need Stripe's package um, in order to use this. So let's quickly just add the Stripe package that we need. So it's going to be stripe, hashtag, uh, colon, version 8.14.00. I believe that's it. And then let's go through the um, logic of this code. So here, some admin pieces. What we're looking for is on request. So that means um, when stripe pings us, this code will run. And you can read all about event types, like what data, like what data objects being returned um, for subscription. So you've got a subscription object. You can see here that these are basically what's being returned from Stripe. Um, you can read it at your own time. But what we really need is I'm just logging that we've received the data, logging the customer ID we've received before. You don't need to log it. But what we are doing here is that it firstly looks through the user's collection where the Stripe ID is equal to um, what Stripe customer key Stripe is sending us. And then I'm going to just update three uh, few key fields. So I'm going to update the subscription ID. So we're storing what is that subscription ID for later use. I'm going to uh, add the plan end date. So this is basically how long they subscribe for. If it's monthly, it's going to be every month. Um, so today was like, today, if it's March the 1st, the end date is going to be um, April the 1st. Um, and then the status of the subscription, you can read a lot about statuses as well. Um, incomplete, expired, trialing, active, past due, cancelled, unpaid. The two key statuses I recommend looking for is if you have set up trialing, it will be trialing and active. Uh, if it's just no trials, so just look for active. This means that the subscription, um, the user has signed up for active subscription and the invoice uh, has been paid. So you can see documentation about it. And then I'm just gonna look for the product ID just to capture some metadata and the price ID um, for our users. So this is what happens when a customer subscription gets created. Uh, this event occurs when the customer go through the checkout for the first time. And next, I will also have a one for deleted so for example, if the customer uh, has canceled their subscription, I will listen and update the status um, of deletion. Um, you can configure what happens at deletion. For example, do you immediately cancel the subscription or cancel at the end of the period? That's all configurable within Stripe. Um, so I believe if you go to, if you go to settings, billing, customer portal, which we'll use later on as well to help us manage the subscription, you can easily see you want to cancel immediately or cancel at the end of the period, billing period. Uh, a lot of configuration offered by Stripe, which you know you just dig in yourself and 
customize it to your own needs. Uh, so here I'm listening for the user's collection. Um, here, the, uh, where the Stripe custom ID is equal to ID we are being sent from Stripe. And here I'm updating, you know, whatever, right? Updating information, updating the document. And similarly, for update. So update happens when most likely a user has changed his subscription, um, for example, from basic to premium. Uh, and then here we want to capture that information as well. So when they change, we also need to update the product ID. Suppose you have like different products with different pricing models. Um, here we have a basic one, but I just include it here just in case uh, you make a more complex you know, range of product suite. And subsequently the price ID. So the new price ID of if they upgraded from $19 to 30, it will be the $30 price ID. And then here we'll send uh, 200 response telling Stripe, we have you know, received your event, we've listened to it, stop sending um, any more re um, event related to this update or related to this uh, webhook. And basically next you're just gonna deploy it. Um, I won't, I'll just skip this deploying part, it's a bit boring. Now that's deployed, you can easily see on you know, console, Google Console Cloud, and you can see the source here, um, same code. So what we need to do here is actually set up the endpoint secret. So we have to deploy it first because I'm gonna set up the uh, webhooks on Stripe end. You can add an endpoint. So or by going to, you can add an endpoint by going to developers, add an endpoint. And then the URL we, uh, um, we need to pass to Stripe is basically this URL here. It's hiding somewhere. Is it, where is it? It's this trigger URL. Uh, so this is the class, the endpoint, and then you can write a description if you want. Um, the event we need to, need to listen for, as I said, was a customer.subscription.created.delete.updated. And then add event, and then add endpoint, great. So I've added the endpoint. Now I will also update this endpoint secret with the signing secret here. So copy and paste it here and then deploy again. Whoop. Save it and then deploy again. Okay, now I've deployed the function with the updated endpoint secret. Let's add these fields into our database so that we can see it when the webhook event is received. Stripe ID, it's going to be your type date time. Uh, the status, which will be your type string. Uh, the product ID, type string. And the price ID, type string. So, you know how we have stored product ID and price ID? You can actually make an API call. Um, to get those information. Uh, so for example, the ID doesn't tell you the name. Maybe you want to retrieve the name of it, or you want to retrieve information about the subscription. You can use a get to um, pass in the ID of uh, the subscription. Uh, ultimately, you can do a lot of these just IDs because uh, they're, they're the unique identifiers here. Um, but what we want to store here is these fields. And I think that's it. Let's see if it works when we press subscribe. Okay, now that's loaded, let's go through the whole end-to-end -end checkout flow. So I'm gonna select basic of $19 per month, I'm gonna subscribe, and then this will automatically launch up. Um, and then let's quickly go back to, let's go to enter some tests ID. And subscribe. Here there's a, you know, it's processing, it's gonna, navigate back to that URL, test URL I copied, which was like some random URL anyway. Let's look at the, um, the webhook on Stripe developer dashboard to see what's happening, to see if it errored out or was it successful. You can see here that a customer event has been created, a customer event has been updated. Um, perfect, so creation, you can see here the status for creation is incomplete, while the status for update is, uh, that's not right, uh, active uh, is, so that's the previous status for update here, it should be active. And let's 
But looking at the back end, you can see here that these fields were not populated previously, but now there's a subscription ID, a price ID, a product ID, um, and the current subscription status of active. Today is 12th of March, and you can see here because it's a monthly plan, the end time will be in a month time, April the 12th, 2024. So what happens at when it gets renewed? When it gets renewed, um, so the beauty of Stripe is that you can actually fast forward time to check what happens. So here, if I go to subscription, I can actually see the subscription I just created. And what you can do here is actually run a simulation. So if you run simulation, and then let's move forward time to maybe a month time, so after when the next renewal happens, let's say 14th, I have an advanced time. So it's loading, it's advancing the time. And then a new subscription event should, a subscription webhook should be sent. So let's quickly, if it's been sent, our database would be updated. And here you can see here, great, it was updated. So May the 12th, um, like I've simulated subscription date or simulated current date of 14th of April, 2024. Therefore, uh, the payment went through and then uh, our current subscription period end date is now May the 12th. Um, you can read a lot more about statuses, um, what, you know, what status should be considered active or, or considered should be used for um, allowing the user to access the app on the Stripe documentation. But as a bare minimum, I recommend trialing and active. Everything else just means like they haven't paid or it's overdue um, or cancelled. I'll conclude the lesson here on Stripe Webhook. In the next lesson, we will allow the user to manage the subscription using Stripe's customer portal. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, 